Welcome to our five-minute Bible study, the book of Genesis. We've been looking at the account of creation in Genesis chapter 2. So God made the wonderful garden, the Garden of Eden. And in it, he placed Adam and Eve, the first humans. They were to be stewards over all of the world. Now, in the middle of the garden, there were trees. And that's what we want to look at today. The Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden. There he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees to grow out of the ground. Trees that were pleasing to the eye, good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Those are the two trees we want to focus on. The tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They could eat from the tree of life, but not from the tree of knowledge. The Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, then you will certainly die. Now what's the meaning of these two trees? What is this all about? Now the tree of life is exactly what it says, the tree of life, eternal life. As long as humanity could eat from the tree of life, they would live forever. And what this teaches us is that eternal life is not inherent within us. That is, we are not eternal within ourselves. We are not immortal within ourselves. Only God is eternal. The idea that man has an eternal soul is not really a biblical idea. Only God is eternal. Eternal life is given to us as a gift from God. It's not natural within ourselves. It is given to us as a gift from God. And so the tree of life was provided. Adam and Eve were to live forever, always having access to the tree of life. And from that tree, from the gift of God, they would enjoy eternity and fellowship with him. Now, of course, after the fall, salvation is all about restoring that life to us for for in the fall, we, we lost access to the life. We'll see that when we get to chapter 3. Death becomes the result. But God, through Jesus Christ, is determined, of course, to save us and redeem us and to restore us to eternal life. And that's why in Jesus we inherit that which was lost in the fall. In Jesus we inherit again the eternal life. But in the garden, the tree of life was there. It was provided for humanity. But there's also the other tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Man was not to eat from that. That was the one prohibition. You may not eat from this tree. Now, first of all, I'd ask you, why is the tree there? <laughs> why, why did God even place a tree in the garden that would be prohibited? It seems that the biblical revelation is clear. God has made us with free will. We can choose to love him and serve him, or we can choose to rebel against him. God wanted us to choose to love him, but that we might truly choose we had to have the possibility of choosing to disobey him. So this tree had to be in the garden and prohibited that we might have the free choice to love him. You see, if you had no other choice, then you're not really loving God. If you have no other choice, it's not really freedom to love. But since there's a possibility of rebellion, that gives you the freedom to love. So the tree is there. Why is it the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Didn't Adam already know? what good and evil was. They knew it was for evil to eat from the tree. The tree of knowledge of good and evil represents or symbolizes our desire to choose for ourselves what is right and wrong. It's not that when you eat from the tree, suddenly you realize what's right and what was wrong. You didn't know it before. I don't know. To eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is saying to God, I don't want you to choose for me what's right and wrong. I want to choose that for myself. I want to determine what is right for my life. I want to determine what is wrong for my life. You can't tell me what's right and wrong. I'll tell that for myself. You see, to partake of the tree of knowledge of good and evil is to say, I don't want you to be the God of my life. I want to be God. I don't want you to be the Lord of my life. I want to be Lord. I don't want you to be the master of my life. I want to be master. That's why this tree is prohibited. It is that Ultimate sin is saying, I would rather be God than have you, O Lord, be God over me. 
which is exactly what Satan is going to tempt Eve to do in chapter 3. We'll see that when we get there. But the tree of knowledge of good and evil is prohibited because it represents our desire to choose for ourselves what is right and wrong, irregardless of what God says. And so you have these two trees in the garden, the tree of life, which is God's provision for us for eternal life, free to take as long as we love and worship him, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is prohibited. That is to say to God, I would rather master my own life than have you as Lord over me. I'd rather be God than have you be my God. That is the ultimate sin. That's why it's prohibited. And so here we have Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, a perfect world with one prohibition. You must always recognize that God alone is God and you must not try to be God for yourself. That is to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That is prohibited. Of course, we know as we're going to see in chapter 3 what humanity decided and how the fall came. But we'll look at that in detail in a couple of sessions. But for now, just remember, God made a perfect world for us. And he provides eternal life for us as long as we'll worship him only, serve him only. For he and he alone is God. Amen and amen. I hope you have a wonderful day today. And I'll look forward to seeing you next time for our five-minute Bible study in the book of Genesis.